Well, it is the end of a two day session. I cannot be more pleased. I hope you all are as well, who've, who've had the privilege of attending some of these um, speakers over the last couple of days. It is um, day two, session six of our Learning from the Land series. We're hosting it, um, I like to say, in Southern Victoria High School in the um, territory of the Wallistaquay. And we'd like to acknowledge that uh, we also have had guests from Mi'kmaq territory and ancestral territory of the Passamakati. So it's been a really wonderful event and virtual uh, attendance has, has been far greater than it would have been face to face. Although uh, we haven't been able to touch the trees or touch the water, we have certainly learned from the land by learning from those who appreciate her and have experienced her. So um, acknowledging the territories that we are on, I would love to introduce our final speaker, who's sort of wrapping up after a introductory to wind and the wind bird, Wojowson. We've heard about a beautiful partnership between natural forces and Tobik First Nation around wind energy. We've heard from Gaia and NB Power uh, about the, the technicalities of wind production and energy renewables and um, uh, getting, getting onto the grid. We've we visited the Wabanaki forest and learned of the sacred uh, sacred plants therein, and we are now going to close with some lessons from the past and some hope for the future with um, Blue Jay Ed Pearly. Welcome, and may I offer you this as a token of gratitude. This pouch of tobacco and thank you for being with us this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to ask Ed though that you um, get introduced by a dear friend of ours both, Mr. Ian Smith. Hi Ian. Hi gang, my oh wait now. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes we can. Awesome. Hi, Ed. You and I have, have met a couple of times, and Pam uh, Pam asked me to introduce you. Um, I'm going to go by way of introduction through our our mutual good friend Ken Paul, um, who I've I've had the fortune of of being a friend for over 20 years now, and he holds you in very much high esteem for the work that you do with the children and the communities and uh, and the size of your heart. Um, I'll, I'll just reference my, my daughter who happened to be one of the first speakers. And she said that together today for all our children tomorrow. And uh, I know that you'll be a, a, a great ending to a beautiful two days. Um, just a quick recap, we, uh, we've, we've been all sorts of wonderful places, heard lots of beautiful stories from, uh, from Walter and others. And uh, I'm just glad to be where, where we are now with, with uh, the people that we, we are spending time here with in this, in this beautiful land. So without any further ado, uh, to Ed, thank you for all that you do and uh, looking forward to the next little bit. Will you win? Thank you, Ian. And Ed, you have the space to share a story or a drum and close us off. We appreciate you being here. Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, you know, we with DPS, we with the and the way back to the last week, Quay, Iguano. All this good and uh, again, I just my name is uh, DPS Blue Jay English Edward Hurley. 
Others here in Negotkog, uh, Tobik, um, part of that uh, beautiful, uh, bountiful river, uh, Wolskowik. And I just want to thank, uh, you know, Pamela for asking me to be a part of this uh, gathering uh, today. And I'd like to thank my uh, friend uh, Ian for uh, introducing to me, introducing me today. And, uh, you know, when uh, we first started the Diamond Memorial Camps, uh, back probably in the uh, early 2000, uh, well, probably about 2010. Uh, Ian and uh, Ken and uh, Tracy and Austin uh, came up uh, to help us uh, up in Mount Crowton. And we all had a beautiful, wonderful time. Um, to uh, I seen uh, Walter, I was good to see Walter as well. Uh, also Mr. Moulton, uh, where I learned my stories from. Uh, one day, maybe I'll have to get him to tell you about Herman the Warm. But uh, <laughs> Delbert and I also uh, go uh, quite a ways back as well. Um, it's important to uh, acknowledge uh, people that uh, invite you or people that you know uh, that are gathering uh, around the same time, telling stories. And I hope all the youth uh, had a wonderful uh, few days. And uh, I don't know if I can match anything that was shared, or but I'll just do what I do. And uh, but by first, uh, I want to share a prayer. Uh, it's always important when we gather to to uh, go pray to a higher source for uh, for the wisdom and and the guidance. Uh, that's what I'll be doing today, and uh, praying for the wisdom and and guidance so I could be guided to the next forty five minutes. So I'll say a prayer in our language and um was welcome is giving thanks for this day. Chigal was it Gijan Spinta Negwasan. Chigal was in Mosum Signopa Sichi Plag and Negwasan. Skitka Miguel Tek Leon Bemgiskok Chig Mouse Wagan. The Bachimel Ben Jokamin and Bemgiskok Galwak Ya at Kokagno. Zalm Wagon, Zankewidas Wagon, Septuinen, Nagadia, Wignedia, Naskadas Wagon, Majapto Nito, Naga Yawak, Pizan Septuinen, Rioman Gamut, Sagilwaka Zalm Open, Lukten of the Zalman, Rioman is age. So I also want to acknowledge, uh, I know we still on there, the Grand Chief Ron. Ron and I also uh, go up together here in uh, Toby. So I also want to share a song. Uh, so uh, earlier when I said uh, Kwe, that means hello, a guano is to, to welcome. And the song I want to share, it's a, it's a welcome song. Matter of fact, when I started uh, down this journey or this path, um, this is the first song that I learned how to sing. And it's called a guano day. Go and welcome or go and greet the day.
is uh, St. Patrick's Day today. So uh, I want to wish everybody uh, St. Patrick's Day. And I uh, hope, uh, again, uh, everybody had a good celebration today. Um, Ted, we can't hear you. My, uh, we can't hear you well, I should say. We can't. Uh, my mic's on. Okay. It's a little better. You were louder at the beginning, but. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. Um, my mic's on. Okay. Uh, him. Is this volume up? I know that makes a difference. <laughs> We could hear the drum perfectly. Can you hear me now? It's it's faint, but I can hear you. If anybody else, we can thumbs up if we can hear. Okay, and I'll continue. Yeah, I'm just on this uh, computer, so uh, I don't know what's going on with it. Okay, we're all adjusting our volume. All right, Hello. thank you, Ed. Can you hear me now? It's not perfect, but it's it's good enough. All right, well, I'll, I'll uh, try to uh, move as close as I can. Okay, that's good. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Kim just trying to adjust the uh, volume. It's all the way up to 100, so. Okay. Yeah. Can you still hear me? Or yeah, they... I can hear you. Just don't be afraid to yell. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. So, uh, one of the things uh, I'd like to share is, uh, you know, these uh, these songs and these prayers and these stories are, are very special. Same with the drum. And uh, I think Kim moved it from me. Oh, wait. That's because, you know, uh, you guys are all special. Hmm. You know, all the teachers and all the students there, you're all special. And uh, so what I thought I'd do, uh, share a story. You know, it's a personal story. And B.J. Uh, Leifman, long time ago, how it used to be. When I was about uh, five years old, uh, living here in the community, my first language was uh, Malsey. And Willistigwe, and I didn't understand English, or uh, I didn't speak English till about the age of five. So uh, at the age of five, uh, we had an Indian day school here in the community, and uh, we had to go to the school and uh, learn. But the first day of school, uh, didn't understand uh, English, and I didn't speak English, so. Uh, First day went to school there it was a pretty uh, it was a pretty ex scary experience. So anyway, I uh, went to this Indian day school for about four years, <clears throat> from about grade one to about grade four. So what the the nuns we, that were teaching us uh, would uh, teach, uh, learn us how to speak uh, in uh, English. They would sing these songs uh, to us and and many other things to learn how to speak and read and write in English. So we went there for about four years and from the age of five to probably about age, oh, I don't know, say nine or 10. So by then we would go down to the public school at uh, Andover Elementary School. Uh, you guys know where that is. It's a lot of you probably went to school there. So anyway, uh, you know, I went to school there, and my teacher's name was Miss Parkwire, grade five. And uh, one day she had asked me if uh, I would come to school uh, on a history uh, class, and uh, if uh, that day I would sing sing a song with my drum. So uh, you know, I was pretty excited about that. I told her, yes, I, I would be honored to come there and and sing a song. So anyway, uh, that day uh, I was supposed to sing. I, I brought my drum. It was a different kind of drum. It was a it was a two-headed uh, drum. My dad 
and made me, you know, and uh, so I went to school that day and uh, the afternoon there, she uh, introduced me. She said, uh, Ed's going to come up and uh, sing a song for us today. So uh, she invited me up in front of class. And um, so I started, uh, you know, looking at all my fellow students there. And uh, I was kind of uh, nervous, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, I uh, started drumming this song, eh? experience uh going to the principal's office and that at that time it was uh mr dixon he was the principal so i went down to his office i was sitting there and uh, just waiting waiting for him to come to see me so anyway he finally called me in his office and uh he asked me he said uh so Ed, why didn't miss farquhar send you into my office and i told him i said well i don't know i said uh I'm trying to figure out that one myself. I said, uh, I said, she asked me today uh, if I would come and sing an Indian song. So I sang Oh McDonald. And uh, she told me that that wasn't an Indian song. And, uh, I was telling her it was. So that's why she sent me down here. And I, he said, how do you figure that? And I said, well, when I went to school in the Indian Reserve, I said, uh, you know, it was all Indian kids. And uh, you know, we're singing these songs, learning these songs, and uh, I just thought Old MacDonald was uh, an Indian song. And after that, he said, oh, is that it? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, you go back to class, and uh, I didn't get punished or anything like that. So so that was one, that was the first uh, Indian song I sang, Old MacDonald, eh? So, but, uh, <laughs> so that's a story that, uh, that happened, you know, probably 53 years ago, somewhere along there. 55 something like that it's been a long time but uh today uh it was an honor uh for pam uh, to ask me to come and uh, you know share some songs or share some stories and uh so that was one song and one story and usually there's uh be, you know behind stories there's also songs mm -hmm. so one of the um story i want to share with you i don't know if i'll have time but i'll i'll try to do my best uh, because it's a rabbit story and i'm going to tell you a rabbit song so uh anyway uh growing up uh, again on the reserve uh you know we didn't have all this wonderful technology uh, everybody has today and uh fortunately today it's being useful but back then we didn't grow up with that <laughs> We we're lucky we had a television. So anyway, uh, you know, uh, my dad, was, you know, he was a craftsman. So at a young age, he made us a drum and, you know, he made us a bow and arrow and, you know, things like that to be able to practice, you know, hunting. Because we're hunters and gatherers, eh? So uh, anyway, uh, one of these days, uh, it was around November, you know, it just, uh, just snowed. And my dad used to work up in, in, in the woods there in a wood camp. So my mom wanted me to go get some rabbits. You know, being the oldest boy, I had a responsibility, even though I had younger siblings, but that was my responsibility is to go and gather food or whatever the family needed would. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, and I was always happy, you know, look forward into testing out my skills. So just up along the Wollstick River there, there's a patch of woods there and, uh, that's where the uh, rabbits used to hung, hang out. So anyway, my dad had a, a 410 uh, shotgun and a 22, and uh, I had my bow and arrow. So anyway, I went up to my dad's room. I looked for the, I was going to use my bow and arrow, but it wasn't there. And uh, I had this, uh, my dad had a 22 and a 410, so I looked for that and it was gone. So anyway, I figured, well, my dad must have took it up when he went to work in the woods. So anyway, I went downstairs in the kitchen and I looked around in there and I found a pepper. So 
So I got a bag and I put uh, pepper inside a bag and uh, put that in my pocket. And I walked up along the, the river, you know, and uh, was wondering. I seen a lot of rabbit tracks and uh, all of a sudden I was wondering, geez, where am I going to set up, you know? So I looked over to my left and there, there was a good sized uh, pine tree. So anyway, uh, and in front of the pine tree was a rock. So I said, well, that's probably a good place to go set up. And uh, anyway, I uh, went down and uh, <clears throat> I put the pepper in front of the rock and uh, I went to hide behind a tree. The tree was a good size, so it could hide me pretty good. Eh? And all of a sudden, I, uh, you know, see the rabbit. They eh? are getting excited. So what rabbits will do, they'll, they'll start out, they'll hop, they'll stop, look around and stuff like that. So... Uh, Finally, that rabbit made its way over to, to where the rock was. I'm just sitting there real quiet, eh? patient. All of a sudden, that, that rabbit went down. He sniffed the pepper. Uh, <laughs> came down and banged his head on that rock. Eh? So I grabbed the uh, rabbit. I put it in a bag. Eh? So anyway, I, I caught about four, uh, four rabbits like that. You know, I, I thought, you know, that, that should be enough to feed our family for supper. So... I went back home and uh, my mother said, uh, how'd you make out, Ed? So oh, I think I did pretty good, Mom. I said, I got, I got four rabbits. And she said, well, put them in a the sink and I'll, uh, I'll clean them. I said, okay. So anyway, in the meantime, I had uh, my uh, two younger brothers and my sister, you know, uh, Gerald, uh, Dean, and Sherry. And uh, we're in the living room playing around. And all of a sudden we heard this, ah! like that, eh? Oh, Jesus, my mother, eh? She's in the kitchen. So we ran in there and I asked her, I said, hey, Ma, what's wrong? She goes, I thought them rabbits were dead. So I told her, I said, oh, sorry. I said, they must have knocked themselves out, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the rabbit story. And that's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so now, uh, you know, uh, now I told that story, I, I'll sing you guys a rabbit song. Oh. And a lot of times uh, I sing the song and, uh, you know, nobody will be dancing. And all of a sudden you see all these little rabbits starting to hop around. Eh? And uh, so this is a rabbit song. I'll sing a couple of verses of it.
that's a rabbit story and a rabbit song. So now <laughs> I'm just going to take a drink. You know, uh, again, you know, back in the day, uh, BJ Lakeman, you know, again, we didn't have this technology. So uh, what our uh, parents would do, father or our mother or Sometimes our grandparents or grandfather or grandmother, sometimes even our aunts and uncles. Like any time it was bad weather, we would gather, you know, in the living room and uh, they would share us, uh, you know, these stories, you know, and inside the stories uh, are lessons. It's up to uh, each in the individual that uh, listens uh, and hears these stories is uh, to... Uh, Think about what is the lesson in that story. So the next story I want to share with you is uh, is a Galuska Galuska story Galuska Galuska. Anyway, uh, B J Lakeman, long time ago, the way it used to be, a eh? uh, Galuska used to travel this beautiful earth, eh? and back then, back in the day, the animals were real big, eh? like they're a lot bigger than they were were today. Uh, for some reason, uh, they must have did something, and they, you know, ghosts kept shrunk them to the size they are today. So anyway, in these days, uh, ghosts kept was walking through uh, the forest, and uh, as he was walking, all of a sudden he felt something bite him. So uh, he reached down on his leg, and uh, there was a jugal, say, eh? frog. He, he was holding the frog in his left hand and talking to him. Say, Hey, uh, frog, so what are you doing? Just going around and biting people and hurting people. He said, you know, you shouldn't do that. It was not good to go around and, you know, hurt people. You know, he said, uh, next time that happens, he said, I don't want to have to, uh, something bad will happen to you, he said. So the both agreed. He said, yeah, okay. So we let him go, eh? So, you know, time went by and, uh, Again, one of these days, you know, uh, most couple was walking through the forest again. All of a sudden, felt something bite him again, eh? So when he reached down, it was a frog again, eh? So he's holding him in his left hand again. He says, hey, frog, I, thought I told you last time, you know, uh, when you bit me and you hurt me, I told you uh, something will happen to you because it's not good to go around biting or or hurting people, he said. So anyway, uh, Gluskap uh, had this bull and uh, started taking all the frog's teeth out, eh? Took all his teeth, because back then the frog had teeth. So all of a sudden, uh, and after a while, he shrunk them down, eh? Ooh, like to about the size. When you see frogs out there today, that's, um, that's how uh, small they are because of, you know. Anyway, so during the summertime, I, you know, at nighttime, you'll hear the frogs go, we bit, we bit, we bit. Because in our language, you say we bit is tooth or teeth, eh? So, you know, at summertime, the frogs at night are trying to get their teeth back, eh? <laughs> and I, I tell people, I said, you know, I tell the kids, I said, you don't believe me. I said, wait till this summer. I said, you know. Nighttime, you're going to hear them frogs hollering, eh? We bit, we bit, we bit. And that's why. So that's a, that's a story about uh, Little Scab and the Frog. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to sing this song. Um, <clears throat> and some of you guys might uh, recognize the melody. Okay? It's called Upsagik when Skit to me.
recognize that though? The small world. Right on. Yep. Right on. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored. So these were uh, songs that um, we were taught to us when we were young. And uh, <clears throat> it also, uh, when I say like, you, I'm saying your name, Pamela, Pamela Lee Weasel. And Pamela, Pamela is our friend. And same with mm -hmm. uh, the other people mm -hmm. that I uh, mentioned. Um, that song, uh, Now I Know My ABCs. You guys could tell me what you think of me on Facebook. Leo, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> so, uh, 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 so I'm going to tell you, uh, this is a story that's been passed down from uh, generations. Probably by the time it reached me, it's probably maybe about the fifth or sixth generation. So again, our people were, you know, hunters and gatherers, you know, they relied uh, a lot on uh, hunting and gathering uh, food and uh, catching fish and, you know, getting the medicinal plants, uh, get ready for winter. So when one of my cousins, uh, they used to call him the rifleman. You know, he was a pretty good shot. They had uh, one of them guns or Winchesters with uh, 30-30, I think they called him. So anyway, it was around fall time, you know, hunting season. And uh, anyway, he only had one bullet. So anyway, he, uh, he knew that if he went hunting that he had to make this, you know, make this one shot count. Eh? So anyway, he's walking through the woods and uh, all of a sudden he comes up on his field. And uh, there's a lake and uh, there's two bucks kind of standing, you know, side by side with one another. So anyway, he uh, took out his uh, gun and he aimed and he said, had, he said to himself, he said, I gotta make this comfy. So anyway, he fired. <laughs> that bullet hit that first deer, eh? Went down and then it hit the second deer and the second deer went down. Well, behind the second deer was a big rock and that bullet hit that rock and it ricocheted up into the sky and a duck happened to be flying by. So he hit the, he hit the duck and the duck landed in the lake. So anyway, he went to go retrieve the duck. On his way back out of the water, a salmon jumped in his boat. Eh? So with one bullet, he shot two deer, a duck and caught a salmon. And that's a true story. And you know, so, uh, so with that, um, so with that story, uh, you know, so, you know, a lot of times, you know, I, uh, my, my relatives and my, you know, my friends, I'll gather together, you know, when they go hunting and they'll start uh, telling their hunting stories, sharing their stories, eh? So I listen to them, you know, and uh, they have some pretty good stories, eh? But I don't know why it is every time I come up there and share that story, hey, they all like look at me and Everybody takes off. And I told him, I said, why? I said, you guys were telling me your hunting stories. I, I said, I believed you guys. I said, all of a sudden, I tell you my story and you guys don't believe me. So that, I guess, but that's how it is. Eh? And, uh, that's one thing about, you know, when you guys probably had some of these things like experience in your lives, eh? like something would happen, you know, and you're all by yourself, you know, it's a kind of an unbelievable story, you know, but uh, because nobody's around to verify your story, nobody believes you, but, you know, it's a true story, eh? I'm sure a lot of you guys might have had that happen, or if not, uh, it will happen to you in the future. So uh, thank you for allowing me to share that story. Um, so the song uh, I'll sing to that is... Uh, it's so quite a long song, but uh, maybe I'll just uh, sing a short one. So this song here I'm, I'm going to sing is uh, Be Daman. It's to think about all the people, all the women, all the men, and all the children. And it's called Be Daman. Thank you. 
song, uh, again, it translates into the Jew Gammon, and she's a homage. Let's help and let's think about, you know, the people and uh, in everything that we do. Also to um, help and think about the women and everything that we do. And also to help and think about the men and everything that we do. And also to help and think about the children and everything that we do. And that's called the Jew Gammon. Mm -hmm. so, I'll just uh, tell you um, another story. Uh, this story here wasn't, uh, this didn't happen too far uh, ago uh, or long ago, it, uh, probably within the last 10 years. So anyway, uh, I was supposed to go up to uh, Elsie Bookham and um, meet some elders there, uh, Joe John and his wife Irene. God rest her soul. She just passed away a couple months ago. But anyway, uh, so anyway, I, I wanted to get to the to the Renault before dark. So I just got off work and I came home and I packed my bag and I, uh, I skipped supper. So anyway, I got in my truck and I started heading out there. I was uh, around Rowena, I guess. Um, it's not far from here five, six miles, and uh, I started getting hungry. So, geez, I started thinking about food, eh? All of a sudden, I see this deer you know, coming out of the woods, and it's almost to the road. So, anyway, I, uh, you know, I don't really like deer meat, so I stopped my truck, and I let the deer proceed across the road. You know, this deer was safe, and I started going, and uh, when I got up to Plast Rock, you know, Again, I want to say time I didn't stop. So I just uh, kept on driving and, you know, I got probably about 20, 25 miles into the Renault. So I'm starting to get hungry again, thinking about food. All of a sudden I see this small bear cub, you know, is uh, coming out of the woods, almost to the road. And again, I'm thinking, nah, I can't run over that bear because I don't even like bear meat. So again, I stopped my truck and let the bear go across. I kept proceeding on. And uh, so this time I, you know, get about halfway across the Renault and uh, probably about, you know, three quarters away. And uh, so anyway, I'm thinking about food again. He's all of a sudden I see this uh, partridge. You gotta know what a partridge is, there's a bird. I'm driving, I'm seeing it, and it looks like that bird's gonna smash right into my windshield. And I'm like, no, I can't have that happen. So I'm trying to think, drive, what am I gonna do, man? So anyway, I rolled down my window, driving, I rolled my window down, I stuck my arm out, you know? And I'm thinking, as soon as uh, this uh, partridge is gonna hit my windshield, I'll swerve. So I did, all of a sudden, it, it's all about time, and so I'm driving, all of a sudden, it's almost ready to crash into my windshield. And I, I swerved and I caught it in my hand, my left hand. So I uh, snapped his neck like that and got out there. And, you know, I had a bag, so I put it in a bag and proceeded to drive. And I finally got to Rogersville. So I stopped in there and I got a cup of coffee, Kim Hortons, and a, and a donut. And I washed my hands up a little bit there, you know, a little bit of blood. So I uh, proceeded on and uh, finally I got over to uh, Drew John and Irene's there and uh, it was around, oh, I don't know, say seven o'clock somewhere. So I went in the house and uh, of course, you know, uh, when you visit uh, elders uh, in, uh, in the communities, they're always going to offer you something to drink or something to eat. So anyway, when I got there, Irene said, hey, would you like a cup of tea or coffee and a something to eat. I said, sure. So anyway, she made me a cup of tea. And, you know, while I'm sitting there, I said, oh, geez, you guys wouldn't believe. <clears throat> I said, believe what happened to me. And uh, he said, what happened to you, Ed? And I told him the story about what I just shared with you guys. I said, yeah, I, you know, I was hungry. I seen a deer. I let him go. I seen a bear. And 
let him go. I said, but when a partridge was going to hit my my windshield, I said I had to kill the partridge. Eh? And uh, Joe John said, ha. he didn't believe me. I can't even believe my story. Eh? He said, oh, you don't believe me? I said, all right then. I said, I'll be right back. So I went in my truck and I got the bag and I brought the partridge up in the house, put it on the table. And uh, Joe John said, oh, I still don't believe you. He said, well, why, how come you're not all bloody? I said, wow, geez. I said, it wasn't a big kill. I said, I broke the partridge neck there and uh, put it in a bag. I said, I stopped into uh, Rogersville and I said, I went in and washed my hands off and uh, grabbed the coffee and the donut. And uh, anyway, he just kind of chuckled. And, <laughs> but Irene said, hey, I believe you. I, I believe you about that story. I said, thank you, Irene. So uh, anyway, <laughs> another true story. Speaking of uh, Tim Hortons, I don't know how much time I have, but, you know, uh, I'll tell you one, one more story about uh, in town here. Oh, I don't know how many years ago now, between five and ten years ago, uh, you know, they opened up this uh, Tim Hortons in town. Before, we had to go all the way to Grand Falls and we had to drive over to Prisco Isle to get a Tim Hortons. So anyway, the town decided to put in Tim Hortons. So that was the best thing I think the town ever did. So anyway, I used to go in there, you know, uh, grab a coffee or tea and a, you know, a donut or something like that. And, and I'd sit down and just, you know, just sit there and enjoy my coffee and my donut. And, uh, anyway, one of these days, uh, this uh, man, a big man, you know, came over to where I was sitting. He said, uh, hey, well, he didn't know my name. He just said, you don't mind if I sit down, do you? I said, sure, help yourself. So he sat down and he uh, he said, you're from the point over there, right? Because they used to call the community here the point. Because where the two rivers meet, eh? I said, yeah, I live over there in the point. He goes, you guys do any fishing and hunting? I said, sure. I said, in the summertime, I said, we'll go fishing for salmon, get salmon and sell it to the white people. I said, in the fall time, I said, we go hunting, we'll shoot deer and and moose, and uh, we sell it to uh, the white people. All of a sudden, this man, big man, he stood up. He reached in his back pocket, eh? Pulled out his wallet, looked at me, he says, uh, you realize who I am? I said, uh, no, who are you? He said, well, I'm a DNR officer. I said, oh, okay. So anyway, I'm sitting there looking up at him, and I told him, I said, well, I said, do you realize who I am? He said, no, who are you? I said, well, I'm the big, I'm the biggest bullshitter from the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my son. He, he asked this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, go, go his way, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, go his way, up, I should say. Go his way, up, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> so these uh, stories I shared with you today, uh, these songs are they're all yours now. You could uh, share them and uh, tell them to uh, other kids or other people. Uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you all the you know uh, ten uh, stories that I know. I only know about ten stories. Um, <laughs> I'm still stuck on the rabbit sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, you have got about seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. Send so them, uh, send them back to the point. <laughs> send them back to the point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, well, well, with that, then I think I have enough time to close off with this song. Super. But again, I, I just want to um, thank uh, each and uh, every one of you uh, for allowing me to share. Uh, songs and stories um, that are important uh, and to me and uh, important to our people. And, um, and if nobody told each and, em and every one of you today that they love you, I want you guys all to know that uh, Blue Jay loves you. Okay. And uh, just remember that when you're out there and you see that Blue Jay and you think you're not loved, remember that. He said, the Blue Jay loves us because he told us that. And he's out there in the world somewhere. So with this song, I'm going to close. It's a honor song. And uh, I 
or maybe you only sing two verses of it. And uh, <clears throat> we'll see equipment in. It's uh, let's be proud of who we are. Um, let's be proud and where we come from, and let's gather together and help each other out. That's what this song translates into. Mm. Well, Alan, thank you so much, Ed. You are quite entertaining, and I can't thank you enough for sharing your stories. You've just been the perfect ending to two beautiful days. Um, chats, well done, Ed. Thank you. Very entertaining. Uh, I echo you, Delbert. Two beautiful days. Amazing presenters. Well done. Thank you so much from students. I um, just want to wrap with, you know, the theme has been learning from the land and you've just summed it up that the land is coming out in stories all day. The land and, and her teachings are coming out in song. 
and the land has really connected us, even though virtually has connected us all um, over the last 48 hours. And I just, I hope we've just sort of been able to look at education differently through stories and through different territories and different perspectives. And I truly hope that the students and those in the audience have appreciated um, all the presenters um, chiming in and the audience who's participated in the chat. And again, I can't thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I have to say, it was Ian that introduced and recommended you um, as a speaker. And I have to say, Ian, thank you so much for doing so. It has been an absolute joy. My pleasure. Uh, we'll leave one to you too, Pam, for uh, an awesome, an awesome day. We'll leave one need up. Uh, thank you, thank you for mentioning, allowing us to share the stories. Mm. Stories for, uh, mean so much, and I hope I hope this has been a phenomenal exercise in building community. Mm. I uh, my grandkids aren't too far from here right now, and and I would all our children need to hear these stories and share our share our our activities in nature at an early age. So. Just once again, we'll leave one to everybody. That was uh, that was phenomenal, and hopefully uh, our cross can pass outside, or can cr our, our paths can cross outside in the near future. Absolutely. Yeah.